morning. Magandang umaga sa lahat. Magandang umaga. Morning. Ah, sa araw na to ako ang inyong MC Maria Gracia Samson. So dahil ngayon ay Agosto at buwan ng wika, kaya inyong ako ay maaring magsalita sa ating o gamitin ang salitang Tagalog o sarili nating uh, dialekto. Uh, aking tinatawagan sa oras na to ang ating uh, uh, kapita-pitagan at simpatikong uh, dekano ng akademya at teknolohikal pangkabuhayang edukasyon, Dr. Rodrigo Abenes. Para sa kanyang pambungad na pananalita. Uh, maraming salamat, uh, Professor Grace. Uh, gaya po nang nabanggit ko yung Ibibigay ko pong uh, pambungan na salita ay sabi ko nga kahapon, ano, ito ay pangalawang uh, webinar natin. So, uh, hindi ko rin alam kasi yung closing remarks ko kahapon ay dapat magsilbi rin na parang opening remarks natin. But anyway, uh, una po ay uh, binabati ko po ang ating uh, panauhing uh, naimbitahan na magbigay ng panayam si Attorney uh, Frances at uh, Pagbati rin po kay uh, ADP Ruel at ang uh, ating top management po ng uh, PNUSN at sa mga uh, uh, guru po at mga professor sa iba't ibang uh, campuses ng uh, PNU system at sa ating mga staff at sa ating mga estudyante, uh, magandang umaga po. Ang ating pong pagdiriwang o ang ating gaganapin pong panayam ngayon ay nakikita ko na isa sa pinakamahalaga na dapat na aktibidad natin sa ating pag-migrate sa tinatawag na transition to new normal. Dahil kagaya po ng nabanggit ko, ito ay nakikita kong isang essential sa pag-formulate ng uh, policy. Na, na, na Tayo ay almost nasa pangalawang huling linggo at uh, ang layunin ng webinar na ito, ng GAD webinar na ito, ay magkaroon tayo ng isang konkretong polisiya kung saan ay meron itong sensidad o sensitibidad sa sa, uh, sa kasarian or gender sensitive na nagpo-promote ng uh, gender justice and at the same time uh, ito ay nag adhere kung ano yung mga pwede nating i-formulate na polisiya sa ating uh, paaralan o universidad dahil nakikita ko na ang traditional o na normal ay isang problematikong uh, espasyo So kaya nga ngayon nakikita ko positibo ako sa nang, nag ano natin na may positibo at nag-aalala ako na ang uh, new normal ay magdudulot ng another uh, for example hegemony. Kaya nga uh, nakikita ko na ito ay isa ding essential na, na isang aktibidad ano. So nung napapag-usapan na, na i-suggest ko sa ating guard coordinator ang ganung aktibidad ay napag-usapan namin kung sino yung mga mga panauhin na pwede namin uh, tagapagpanayam. So, at ang isa, okay, na napili namin ay andyan si Dr. Seni at ang pangalwa ay si si Attorney, ano, uh, Attorney Frances. So, hayaan ko munang, siguro mamaya ipapakilala sa inyo ng mas maano si Attorney, pero uh, hayaan nyo muna ikwento ko siguro yung uh, personal kong uh, pagkakakilala kay Attorney. Uh, gamitin ko yung tatlong F kasi di ba uh, para ano natin yung ano yung unang F uh, si attorney ay uh, isang aking friend ano isang kaibigan nagkakilala kami uh, tatlong taon or limang taon na nakakaraan sa sa Ateneo na nagkaroon kami ng uh, training together with uh, Dr. Raquel Heronimo kung hindi ako nagkakamali ay kami ay group mates siya tanon sa sa training namin sa Rizal sa pag ano ng general education curriculum And then uh, pangalwa ay we are excited ano pangalawang F kasi uh, malaki yung uh, full potential ng PNUSN kung makakasama namin si attorney dito sa pamantasan lalo na dito sa PNUSN ano nahangad namin na magtuloy-tuloy yung positibo yung pagiging proseso ng ng uh, pag 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 uh, pag, uh, pag join niya sa amin sa aming pamantasan at uh, pang Uh, pang tatlo ay ito yung medyo excited ako dahil uh, siya pala ay isang feminist. So nakita ko sa kanyang uh, ipinasang aplikasyon na yung kanyang artikulo na napakataas ng diskurso na ng, ng uh, feminist uh, 
discourses ano kung saan ang kanyang um, mga artikulo ay naisulat about uh, feminist epistemology na uh, sa ngayon ay uh, yan yang yan yang mga debate sa sa feminist debate ano so hindi lang kasi ang feminism is not just an assertion about uh, legal rights but it's also an assertion into attaining a uh, feminist epistemology and at the same time yung tinatawag naming uh, feminist metaphysics kaya ako ay nagagalak at natutuwa at excited excited ano uh, na makibahagi sa ganitong uh, klase ng uh, webinar kung saan ay marami kaming matututunan so muli uh, maraming maraming salamat po at uh, magandang umaga Maraming salamat po si uh, Dr. Aben sa inyong pambungad na pananalita. Ngayon naman ay ating pakinggan si Director Amor Lunisa para sa pagpapakilala sa ating tagapanayam para sa araw na ito. Director Amor. Magandang magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Uh, pwede po ba ako mag-slide share? yung share mag-share screen pala Ah, uh, sa atin pong mahusay na ehekutibong director <laughs> Dr. Roel V. Avila, at sa ating dekanong pang-akademiko at PLE, Dr. Rodrigo Abines, Professor Reynald Cacho, ang Director ng Administrasyon at Pananalapi, sa lahat ng ating panauhin, ang ating uh, tagap mahusay na katagapagsalita kahapon, Dr. Sinaida Reyes, at sa ating panauhin at uh, mga pinuno mula sa iba't ibang campus, Uh, ang dean ng uh, uh, academics ng North Luzon, ang aking kaibigan, Dr. Leticia Aquino. Sa lahat ng mga faculty at uh, kawani ng pamantasang normal ng Pilipinas, isang mapagpalang umaga sa inyong lahat. Isang malaking karangalan para sa akin ang maatasan na magpakilala sa ating panauhing tagapagsalita. <laughs> Masasabi kong siya ay isang inspirasyon para sa mga kababaihan dahil sa kanyang mga nagawa at narating na. Ang ating panauhing tagapagsalita ay isinilang noong ikalima ng Setyembre 1983 sa Barcelona, Sorsogon, kung saan siya ay nagtapos din ng elementarya noong 1996 sa Barcelona Central School. Mabuting may bahay ng isa sa aking mga naging estudyante noong ako ay nasa pagsasanay upang maging isang ganap na guro na si Attorney Adrian Sigi. At uh, naka-flash sa screen ang kanyang mga ang kanyang educational background. Tinapos niya ang uh, secondary level sa Gubat National High School, Gubat Sorsogon, noong April 2000. At masasabi natin siya talaga ay napakahusay at magaling na mag-aaral sapagkat noong Oktobre, Oktobre 2003 ay tinapos niya ang BA Philosophy sa University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City, Cum Laude. Uh, noong Oktobre 2009, tinapos naman niya ang kanyang MA in Philosophy sa University of the Philippines, Diliman, Quezon City. At nito lang, March 2017, siya ay nagtapos ng pag, uh, uh, isang Juris Doctor sa San Sebastian College, Recoletos, Manila. Marami siyang mga pagsasanay na binaluhan at ito ay ilan lamang sa, uh, sa kanyang mga seminars and workshops na, na nadaluhan na. Noong December 11 to 14, 2019, Uh, siya ay uh, dumalo ng mandatory continuing leg legal education Philip sa Philippine Law School sa The Pearl Manila Hotel, Manila. At no October 10 to, 20, 10 to 28, 2016, uh, siya ay dumalo ng CHED Faculty Training for the New General Education, uh, Training of Trainers, 
Life and Works of Rizal sa Ateneo de Manila University, Quezon City. Noong December 2 to 3, 2015, siya ay uh, isa sa mga na naging working committee on documentation uh, sa 2015 Philippine Education Conference, Public and Private, Forging an Integrated Approach to the K-12 Implementation sa SMX Convention Center, Pasay City. At noong November 26 to 28, 2015, siya ay naging paper presenter sa isang international conference na may pamagat na Decentralization and Democracy in Pursuit of the Development Agenda, Academic Practitioners and Civil Society as Champions sa Cebu Normal University, Cebu City. Noong November 3 to 8, 2015, siya rin ay uh, isang naging paper presenter sa 16th uh, Asian Bioethics Conference na may pamagat na Bioethical Challenges and Responses to the New Global Economy sa St. Paul University, Quezon City. Noong July 16, 2015, siya ay naging participant sa Philippine Education Theater Association Teachers Conference on the Life and Works of Rizal uh, sa PETA Theater Center, Quezon City. At noong May 28 to 29, 2015, siya rin ay naging participant ng Coordinating Council of Private Educational Associations in Corporation, COCOPEA Schools in the 21st Century, Evolving in the Conceptual Age, sa Trinity University of Asia, Quezon City. Siya ay naging uh, assistant professor mula June 2004 hanggang August 2017 sa Trinity University of Asia, Quezon City. At uh, mula noong February 3, 2020 hanggang sa kasalukuyan, siya ay attorney 3 sa Investigation and Enforcement Division Legal and Legislative Service Commission on Higher Education, Quezon City. At sa malaot madali, Mapalad ang pamantasang normal ng Pilipinas, Timog Luzon, na siya ay ating makakasama. Uh, without further ado, mga kasama, malugod kong ipinakikilala sa inyo ang ating panauhing tagapagsalita, Attorney Frances May de la Cruz Sigi. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Amor. Maraming salamat, uh, Ma'am Amor. Uh, and Sir Rod, medyo nakaka-pressure yung, <laughs> yung introduction. <laughs> um, hindi, ako po ay um, gusto ko rin pong um, ipresenta sa Wikan Tagalog ang, or Filipino ang aking um, panayam ngayon. Uh, subalit, uh, ako po ay hindi gaanong, ako po aminin ko na po, hindi po ako gaanong uh, articulate pagdating po sa Filipino. Pero um, medyo hindi po ako na, uh, hindi ko po na isip na ngayon nga pala ay buwa ng wika. Uh, so um, siguro um, gagawin ko na lang na uh, Filip Filipino, Tagalog and English. Ayan, ang aking uh, presentation. So, magandang umaga sa lahat, sa mga uh, opisyal ng PNU, ng Philippine Normal University, um, kay Sir, kay Dr. Avila, kay Dr. Uh, Abines, and Dr. Um, Cacho, Cancho. Okay. Um, and uh, other officials of uh, the university um, and faculty members as well as staff and uh, students of uh, Philippine Normal University. Good morning to everyone. So this morning, um, I was tasked by the Gender and Development Office of PNU South Luzon to talk about the Safe Spaces Act in the New, no new Normal Education. Um, before I start, I would like to wish everyone 
I, I wish that everyone is safe and sound in their homes and um, and uh, in any other place that they are in right now. Um, COVID-19 basically affected everybody. Not only, it is not only a health issue, but also uh, an issue that affected all areas of our life, uh, including all sectors of uh, society. Um, so in higher education sector, um, I can say that uh, the Commission on Higher Education is um, painstakingly working to address the needs of to address the needs of um, uh, schools of higher education institutions in this COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and uh, hopefully we would be able to um, triumph on this um, on this pandemic and this uh, challenge that we are in right now. So, uh, share screen. Um, my talk will be limited to. Uh, sorry. Can I share my slide, Mom Brenda? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Coordinate ko po kay Joshua. Yeah. And I think it's there. Ayan. Ayan. So this is uh, the outline of my presentation. So first is the contextualization of uh, what new normal is in education. And uh, it will be followed by the prior legislations, regulations, and case laws. Uh, on sexual harassment, anti-sexual harassment. And um, the main talk will be on the Safe Spaces Act. So the gender-based online sexual harassment, as well as the gender-based sexual harassment in education and training institutions. And uh, I think the most important is the creation of committee on decorum and uh, investigation. So we are in a new normal. Um, we have a limited face-to-face -face instruction. As uh, Sir Rod said, um, during normal or traditional normal in education, um, safe space is already complicated. So the issue on safe space is already complicated. Uh, but it is for it can also be foreseen that um, this new normal could pose more complications than the traditional face-to-face uh, -face instruction. So we have uh, flexible learning options now. Uh, most of this, it can be um, by the use of uh, online resource, uh, educational resource, uh, sharing of resources, uh, use of face-to-face, um, uh, -face, but or manuals, manuals for um, lear manuals for learning, and then we have the non conventional non conventional learning modalities. Um, again, this in includes uh, flexible learning, such as uh, online learning, virtual classroom, um, a blended uh, learning, uh, to name some few. So. Uh, right now, the Commission on Higher Education is um, in the process of finishing the guidelines on the implementation of flexible learning. Uh, lately, I think it's just um, this week or last week they were able to um, they were able to present uh, NSTP uh, using flexible learning. So flexible learning is the design and delivery of programs, courses, and learning interventions that address learners' unique needs, especially this time. So the learners would have, if during the traditional um, traditional face-to-face -face instruction, learners are, are already unique based on my experience, I think it would be uh, a, 
uh, it would pose more challenge to educators uh, when it is uh, when the delivery is already online. So it is more unique now. So in place, pace, process, and products of learning. So let us now move on to the prior legislation. So RA one one three one three is actually uh, an expansion of the old law, the anti-sexual harassment law of 1995. Uh, in this law, it it already covered education and the workplace. So it the school and the workplace. So hopefully, uh, schools have already created or developed their um, committee on decorum and investigation because even this law, even uh, RA number 7877, it already contained a direction uh, that that CODI or that committee must be developed by the schools uh, for to address uh, sexual harassment cases. So there were also issuances coming from uh, the Civil Service Commission, which uh, public schools or uh, public higher or state universities and colleges are uh, covered. Uh, it, uh, it, gov uh, it is about administrative disciplinary rules on sexual harassment cases. So there, there are definitions uh, of sexual harassment in this, uh, in this issue once, but it is uh, limited and uh, RA11313 expanded such definition. So I also have the, here um, a landmark case about sexual harassment committed by a law professor. So I will just um, discuss uh, this case because it's very important, especially for educators. Uh, by the way, hopefully uh, my talk will not alienate or will uh, make male participants um, feel uh, feel offended. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, gender and development is, actu is actually about equality or coexistence of male and female. So um, hopefully it will not in any way alienate uh, male participants. So let us now talk about this case. Uh, this is very important because uh, the Supreme Court actually defined uh, sexual harassment not only in terms of not only in terms of um, categorical remarks such as let's have sex or like that. Um, it's not just about that articulation, but uh, su the Supreme Court also mentioned about um, the, the subconscious effect of um, remarks which are not directly sexual, but it connotes sexual, uh, it has sexual undertones. So dito po sa kaso na to, asiguro meron tayong taga North Luzon. Uh, maybe he, she is familiar about this. Um, kasi nangyari siya sa Cagayan, sa Savior uh, University. Okay. Um, ito pong si Attorney Crescencio Ontian, ko Ontian, uh, ay isang profesor uh, sa law. And um, siya po ay inereklamo ng tatlong estudyante niya. Um, this was a 2000... Uh, 2012 pa na case. Okay, so medyo matagal na siya. Um, am I correct? 2012, I'll check. Mm-hmm. And, and so anyway, so it's an application of uh, anti-sexual harassment law. So to continue the fact, um, Attorney Crescencio uh, was allegedly, allegedly was um, 
um, showing nude pictures to a law student in in a uh, in front of uh, other other students, and then he also uh, made jokes uh, about um, about a student, um, a female student during recitation um and uh during recitation and uh the narrative is that uh attorney crescencio was um quest uh, was asking question and um the student did not hear it properly and the student said if he can come again so Sir, please come again. So that was the the statement of the student, and Attorney Crescencio responded by saying, "It will take minutes for me to come again." So such remark, it may be, uh, it may, it may be a joke to that professor, but uh, such remark. Uh, made the student suffer or embar she was actually embarrassed in front of the class but attorney crescencio did not see it or uh, he said that the student did not suffer or was not embarrassed by his remark uh, and then the other one is attorney crescencio was sending text messages to one of the law students again his student um containing uh, messages such as love you, miss you. And again, uh, the student was, um, uh, she, she felt offended. It was an unwelcome remark coming from, uh, from a teacher. But uh, attorney Crescencio justified it by saying that it was just a normal uh, exchange of messages without malice. So definitely, if you look at the, the facts, um, it is a common uh, practice uh, among teachers, especially if they want to get the attention of students and to make uh, the class alive, uh, they would just throw jokes. And sometimes these jokes would actually, would, would actually have uh, sexual undertones or underpinnings and they are not aware of it so this time uh, with this case and with RA11313 educators should really be cautious about uh, uh, their remarks to their students and not only actually educators but also students to their fellow students because it may uh, create an unwelcome feeling or it may offend uh, another person even if you think it is not offensive but for them it is offensive uh, under the uh, the safe spaces act it is already um, uh, it is already punishable okay so we will talk about it later so this this case again even prior to the safe spaces act the Supreme Court already um, ruled that it is not necessary that you articulate the sexual uh, favor that you want to another person. Uh, a simple remark which has a sexual undertone or underpinning that would affect or that would um, make the other person offended will will be uh, punishable by by law and especially educators the supreme court was very uh, strict on this uh, since educators are supposed to uh, behave or act uh, with uh, high moral integrity so how can you act with high moral integrity if you are uh, giving remarks uh, such as what attorney crescentio was uh, attorney crescentio uh, did so uh, i also 
put here the revised uh, procedure, procedural rules created by the DOJ on the Committee on Decorum and Investigation. Uh, this one, if there is no uh, CODI yet for, for the school, it can be uh, used as a pattern for uh, the Committee on Decorum and Investigation. Okay, so let us now move to uh, the main course, the main topic. So it's RA number 11313, the Safe Spaces Act. So it was, this is a very um, fresh law. It was signed last April 2019 by uh, President Duterte, but uh, Malacanang uh, presented it uh, in public in July 2019. And the IRR was signed in October 2019. So until now, um, agencies who are tasked to create guidelines and rules uh, in relation to this act are still processing, uh, are still in process of uh, creating those guidelines. So under the declaration of policies of RA 11313, so it recognizes that both men and women must have equality, security, and safety, not only in private, but also in streets, public, uh, public spaces, online, workplaces, and educational and training institutions. Um, what was added in RA 11313 from 7877 was um, the application of anti-sexual harassment rules on streets, public spaces, online. Uh, before, uh, the previous law only, to only talks about um, cell phone or text messages, uh, probably because during that time, it was uh, the, the, the frequently used gadget or technology um, in communication. But now we have uh, social media and online is also an addition to uh, that previous law. So the previous law already talked about the workplace and uh, the school or educational and training institutions. Uh, however, uh, as uh, Sir Rod said, our educational and training institutions now um, is more on virtual, is now delivered or is now delivering through virtual uh, platforms. So it is now a combination of uh, educational and training institutions as well as uh, online platforms. So I consider the following words or definitions important in our discussion. So cut calling and wanted remarks towards a person in the form of wolf whistling. Actually, wolf whistling, I was um, contemplating whether it is still applicable for online. I think it is because uh, if the instruction will be given uh, virtually like this, like this, uh, what we're doing in a Zoom, meet, in a Zoom uh, platform, so there could still be wolf whistling. And of course, misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and uh, sexist slurs could still be um, thrown through this kind of platform that we have, like uh, Zoom. Cyber stalking is a form of stalking okay, through electronic medium in which online communication takes place. And then of course we have gender. Um, I think gender here was defined um, based on a social construct. It's, it's more of a sociological uh, term, as I can see. So set of socially ascribed characteristics, norms, roles, attitudes, values, and expectations, identifying the social behavior of men and women and the relations between them. So that would be gender. Although we know that gender is actually defined in so many ways, but this, uh, this law defined gender as a social construct. So we have homophobic remarks or slurs. So statements of whatever. 
if you look at the, the definition of homophobic remarks or slurs, statements in whatever form or however delivered. So it is not necessarily that the remarks will be given face to face. It could also be delivered uh, in social media or through texts, messages, uh, and other platforms. So the law is very uh, specific. It's not actually specific, it's general. It covers all kinds of uh, platforms. So same as with uh, misogynistic remarks, sexist remarks, transphobic remarks, and we have stalking. So stalking is um, a conduct directed at a person involving repeated visual or physical proximity, non-consensual communication, or a combination thereof that cause or will likely cause a person to fear for one's own safety or the safety of others or to suffer emotional distress. So stalking is, um, if we look at this one, the definition of stalking is very general. So for instance, a simple, uh, th a simple threat such as uh, in social media such as if you don't uh, if you don't give me if you don't pay me then I will uh, I will do something that you will not uh, that you will regret so a threat like that it could still it could already uh, be considered as uh, as a st a stalking. So if a person, if the uh, on the other end, the person on the other end, the person threatened uh, since uh, of non-payment of his or her debt uh, would already could already file. If we use this, if we use this um, definition, even if it is not sexual in nature, since um, that threat is actually about uh, putting you under the control of that person and that is already a harassment and what the law is uh, the law is actually vague in here since um, even if even if um, it's not sexual in nature if it causes suffering or emotional distress or the the message is unwanted or unwel unwelcome and um, it offended the other person, then it could already be punishable in this, um, in this act, in this law. So let us now continue with the online, gender-based online sexual harassment. So how is it committed? So how, are those perpetrators of uh, gender-based online sexual harassment terrorize and intimidate victims using information and communication technology? So um, the law here is particular about actions against the victims. So uh, sexual harassment is already committed and um, there is already a perpetrator and the victim and the perpetrator uh, would keep on harassing the victim so that uh, it will stop or it will it will stop his uh, his or her uh, complaint against uh, the perpetrator so how is that done so it could be done through physical psychological and emotional threats so as i've said even if it is not sexual in nature. Okay, so unwanted sexual misogynistic, transphobic, homophobic, and sexist remarks and comments online, whether publicly or through direct and private messages. So it's not simply a posting, a public posting that could be considered as uh, sexual harassment of victims. It could be direct or through private uh, messages. So this is the reason why uh, the government is really strengthening its uh, anti-cybercrime uh, division, the PNP, the NBI, so that uh, even direct and private messages could be, um, 
it could be con it could be taken and seen and uh, be considered as uh, evidence against uh, the perpetrator. Uh, we're not talking about data privacy here. Uh, later on, uh, we will see that uh, there is an exception as to data privacy when it comes to uh, investigations involving sexual harassment cases. So next we have, it could be also done through invasion of the victim's privacy through cyber stalking and incessant messaging. Uh, also, it could be done through uploading and sharing without the consent of the victim, any form of media that contains photos, voice or video with sexual content. So here uh, for letter C, it should be with sexual content. So it's not simply your photo, okay? Uh, your photo uh, in a, a webinar so it's it must be a photo with with uh, sexual content so it's very specific so any unauthorized recording and sharing of any of the victims photos videos or any information online impersonating identities of victims online or posting lies about victims to harm their reputation uh, especially during this time, uh, and then filing false abuse reports to online platforms to silence victims. So if we look at uh, the manner or the ways on how uh, the perpetrators could terrorize and intimidate victims, um, this could easily be done, especially in social media today. And um, we're very fortunate that this, this law now uh penalizes or punishes these kinds of acts because we could easily post uh photos um videos and um harm the reputation of uh, other persons without um being responsible about it or be without uh liability in such act but now because of this law uh it is now punishable so we really have to be cautious again as to the things that we post online, especially for probably students, okay? Because they're um, the the mostly they are the users of uh, social media. Although educators also make use of the social media for information, uh, most of the time uh, it. Uh, it, 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 it's the students who are actually exploring uh, social media and using it the way they wanted to use it. So who are the agencies responsible for the implementation of uh, gender-based social uh, online sexual harassment uh, cases? Who are um, responsible for um, taking or receiving and uh, solving this uh, gender-based online sexual harassment. So as I've said earlier, we have the anti-cyber crime group of uh, the PNP, the Department of Justice, uh, the DICT, uh, especially it is online. So DICT would have a very, um, they would, they have a greater role in, um, the implementation of this uh, gender-based online sexual harassment law or rule. And we have the National Telecommunications Commission, uh, which is in charge of our networks. Uh, since most of, um, most of the cases would come from um, our data connection and our cell phones. And then we have the National Privacy Commission. So here, the NPC, the role of NPC is uh, to maintain confidentiality and at the same time um, to lighten the application of the data privacy and to make sure that uh, all information about uh, sexual harassment cases would not be put into uh, public ridicule or public uh, use and then so the penalties for online sexual harassment is yeah so you can be imprisoned for a maximum of four years and 
you can be fined a uh, hundred thousand pesos minimum and maximum of five hundred thousand, or you can be you can be punished both. Okay, you can be both. Uh, you can be imprisoned and at the same time fined at the discretion of the court. So I don't know if one hundred thousand, five hundred thousand, and four years imprisonment would be enough for uh, the perpetration of. Uh, sexual harassment uh maybe uh if it depends on the gravity of uh the online sexual harassment um but if it is too much would it be compensated by this imprisonment and fine well um as as a woman as a woman based uh uh on my own perspective if I would be demeaned or offended um, online or harassed sexually online, uh, I don't think my um, my dignity as a woman could just be four years imprisonment and five hundred thousand pesos. <laughs> anyway, so that is uh, my opinion. But uh, the law only states this uh, penalty. So. Moving on, so this is, uh, I think, what is important to us, aside from the online sexual harassment, uh, gender-based sexual harassment. So this one is um, what is applicable to the education, uh, educational and training institutions. So who can commit gender-based sexual harassment in schools and training institutions? So the law listed all these names. So principals, school heads, teachers, instructors, professors, coaches, trainers, uh, and a catch-all provision which states that any person who has authority, influence, or moral ascendancy over another. So this catch-all provision is actually, it comes from uh, the old law, um, which uh, mentions about authority influence and moral ascendancy over another so any person who has power or control over another person so that that person will do whatever he or she wants him to do uh, that person could be liable under this law and then in addition we have students and trainees so before only uh, persons who has authority, influence, or moral ascendancy over another are punished in the old law. So students, trainees, uh, these were not included. Okay, so now it, it was expanded to include students and trainees. So it's not only the educators or administrators who would be punished. So even students could be punished as well. So what are the duties of school heads? and heads of training institutions. So this is very important. Although there is no guideline yet as to uh, how the Commission on Higher Education, DepEd, and TESDA would, um, would do their auditing of schools in terms of uh, their, in terms of their development of procedures um, as stated in this law so there is no guideline yet so wala pang nagagawa i think it's for uh, the higher education institutions ched is already in the process of doing it uh, they are in the process of finalizing the guideline on how they could supervise on how they could check um, higher education institutions as to their compliance to the provisions of this law. So the first duty of schools is to disseminate copies, or this is about information dissemination of uh, the law and its IRR. So the law states that you can send copies to the different departments, bureaus, or subdivisions of, uh, of the school of the training institution for their 
uh, for the information of all members of that uh, unit. And then it could also be posted online or in the website of the school if there is. And uh, the school should also conduct orientation, orientation to students, to teachers, uh, to administrators, to all stakeholders about uh, the law and its IRR. And another is the posting of the law in places where uh, students could easily view it. And uh, the law could also be translated in a language understandable to stakeholders. Another is uh, the school should also provide measures to prevent. So it's about prevention of uh, gender-based social uh, sexual harassment. So we have information campaigns and the inclusion of uh, the provision of the law in the student handbook. So it, it is very, um, the, the word here is express inclusion. So when you say express inclusion, uh, it should be there, articulated directly, okay, in the student handbook. And then we have orientation of student organizations, training of teaching and non-teaching staff. Uh, maybe we, uh, this, this webinar is uh, part of this training of teaching and non-teaching staff, students, um, as to the Safe Spaces app. And then the, th the third one is that the school should also create a committee on decorum and investigation. So as I have said earlier, this committee should have been, should be existing, should already be existing since uh, the previous law already direct or directed that uh, this committee be developed by uh, the different institutions, uh, educational and training institutions and um, other agencies of the government. So next is uh, the school should also provide and disseminate code of conduct or school policy. So it's not only about the student handbook, it could also be contained in a separate code of conduct or uh, probably um, the ad, uh, administration manual, faculty manual. So the manuals that we follow in uh, the university should contain expressly the prohibition on uh, the gender-based so sexual harassment. Uh, it must prescribe procedures of the internal mechanism on how uh, we could address the issue of GBSH and then set administrative penalties. The law actually, it, it even um, gave or authorized local government units to, uh, to formulate ordinances which contain he heavier penalties. So even if it is higher than what was in the law, um, it could be passed by the local government, but it was only for local government uh, units uh, and it will not be applicable for uh, the schools or uh, education, educational institutions. So for educational institutions, we have to abide by what was prescribed in, uh, in this law. So as to penalties, but we can also set administrative penalties, which is separate from the penalties, which is here. But this administrative penalties must conform with, um, for public, uh, for public, schools, it must conform with uh, the, the civil service law and uh, other issuances of um, the civil service. So including probably the RACS, uh, revised rules on administrative uh, cases. So it can be patterned, uh, the, the administrative penalties that the school will impose can be patterned on that uh, issuance. And then we have, uh, the school should also designate an office or person to receive complaints of sexual harassment. So it's not necessarily a separate office. It could be, it could be a person within 
a particular office like uh, the God office. So under the God office, you designate uh, a person to receive complaints specific for sexual harassment. Okay, so the law is uh, clear on this. So in cases where the schools will not implement their duties, so they could be fined. Uh, in the previous law, it was higher. In here, it was lowered. Okay, so from 5,000 to 10,000 for non-implementation of duties. Failure to act on reported acts of uh, sexual harassment committed in the educational institution, it's just 10,000 and 15,000. So, um, I don't know what was the, uh, well, we can say that 5,000 is 5,000 or 15,000 is 15,000. Um, Ateneo was very uh, vocal in, um, op uh, in opposing this liability of schools. Uh, they said that it's very vague and it is not clear. So, um, well, if we look at it, I think it's clear. What was uh, the duties of the school here is very clear. Okay. Although, for instance, uh, I don't know, it's not here. Um, it's in the next, uh, sorry. So later on, we will discuss about the opposition of Ateneo, why they consider the law uh, defective as to the liabilities of uh, schools. So in addition to uh, liable um, persons, minor students could also be liable uh, for administrative sanctions, but the sanction is limited to the discretion of the school. So it depends on how the school will uh, formulate uh, sanctions on minor students. And then we have nothing shall preclude the victim of education or training or related uh, sexual harassment from instituting a separate and independent action for damages and other affirmative relief. So this law does not uh, preclude um, filing of suits before the regular court. So even if even if the school will not act on, um, even if the school is already acting on uh, the sexual harassment case, um, the victim could still file a separate uh, complaint or case before a regular court. It is. Uh, it could. It could be done um, hand in hand. So there is a case in a regular court, and the school is investigating the sexual harassment case. So it will not be uh, a sub judice case wherein uh, you will stop your investigation since there is already a case in court. So it could still be continued. Uh, the investigation could still be continued and uh, such a uh, product, the product or the result of the investigation could be, uh, could be filed or could be submitted to the regular court if they need it. Okay, if they would, um, if they would send a um, subpoena in terms of what you have gathered in your investigation. So they, they can do that. But uh, you cannot stop the investigation since uh, you are, as a school, you are duty bound to investigate because if you, do, you will not investigate or if you will not take appropriate action, then you would be held liable for, uh, for that act, for failure to act on reported acts of sexual harassment. So you, it would fall in the second paragraph. So the Code of Conduct and uh, the Committee on Decorum and, and Investigation. So in the previous rule, um, in the rule under the duties of the school, 
So the school, again, should designate an office or person to receive complaints. So that person should be knowledgeable about gender, gender-based violence, such as sexual harassment, mental health, counseling, and other relevant knowledge and skills in handling the subject cases. So if we look at the, the qualification of uh, the person, so he or she should be knowledgeable in gender. So not necessarily a feminist, okay? Uh, but knowledgeable. It's about the knowledge that you have or probably the experience that you have in handling cases of uh, gender-based uh, violence um, and at the same time handling cases involving uh, mental pressures and uh, on how to uh, to make or on how to um, to, on how to make that hostile environment okay, of a victim in sexual harassment better or on how to um, counsel that person, that victim, um, in terms of uh, coping with uh, the trauma of sexual harassment. So if we look at the qualification, it's more on uh, a psychological or it's a psycholo psychology major could be uh, the best um, person uh, to be designated in this uh, office. Although I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, I'm not saying that it should only be a, a psychology major. Most probably, it should be a psychology major because anyone, anyone could also be uh, knowledgeable in mental health and counseling, even if they are not psychology majors then we have we also have to ensure confidentiality so um, the the receipt of complaints um, involving sexual harassment is very sensitive so uh, para siyang COVID <laughs> para siyang COVID na hindi pwedeng hindi pwedeng malaman nung uh, publiko kung ano yung nangyari maliban lamang dun sa mga uh, concerned persons so hindi pwedeng lumabas yung mga impormasyon tungkol sa mga taong ito at kung ano yung nangyari um, dun sa Ateneo case maraming nagrereklamo dahil hindi daw nilalabas yung impormasyon tungkol sa kaso ng sexual harassment hindi daw uh, Atenea was not putting it in public or it's not uh, presenting it in public. Uh, probably the very reason for that is this, uh, to ensure confidentiality. The law uh, is very strict that uh, even if uh, you, want, you want this case to be solved uh, speedily, because siyempre kung... Uh, gusto na natin matapos agad or ma-resolve agad, medyo may mga mailalabas tayong impormasyon kasi hindi naman parang contact tracing lang yan, hindi mo makukontact, um, malalaman kung sino yung may contact kung hindi mo ilalabas yung pangalan. Pero the law is very strict. So you have to create a rule or procedure that would uh, resolve the case speedily at the same time ensure that uh, the information uh, in the case remains confidential. So yan po siguro yung isang challenge sa mga administrators natin na kung paano um, kung paano natin mapapabilis yung action nang hindi nilalabas ang mga information tungkol sa mga uh, involved sa case. And then uh, the school should also adopt and publish grievance procedures. So pwede na po itong ilagay dito mismo sa conduct ng uh, dito sa Committee on Decorum and Investigation. So when you create or formulate uh, procedures, uh, grievance procedures, then it would be, it could be embedded in the development of uh, the committee and then investigation 
uh, conduct an investigation its, on its own initiative. Uh, this is in relation to the duty of the school that even if uh, even if the complaint is anonymous, kasi di ba po, maraming, maraming mga uh, allegations na sa social media lang nilalagay. Uh, ngayon, ang problema ng, uh, ng authorities like the schools is hindi nila ma-verify yung uh, veracity ng complaint dahil anonymous naman siya. So, hindi naman pinangalanan or pinangalanan yung perpetrator pero yung ibang information hindi nakalagay. So, does it mean that you will stop or you will not act on it? No. So, sabi ng law, conduct an investigation on your own initiative. So, kahit walang complainant, kahit anonymous, kailangan mag-take ng action ang school. Dahil kung hindi, again, uh, yung previous na slide, yung liability ng school, so yun yung uh, penalty natin. And then, um, the school should also develop this, uh, this support system. So hindi basta-basta ang halimbawa may case ka, e papapasukin mo pa yung uh, studyante na yun dun sa klase ng perpetrator. So, kailangan gumawa na tayo ng uh, procedure or guidelines na um, we could help or we could support yung victim. Like, for instance, we would uh, stop uh, stop her from attending the class or whatever uh, activity he or she has with uh, the perpetrator. And if there are court proceedings uh, excuse natin sila sa klase if they will be attending the court proceedings. So, um, these are the things that the school should be uh, mindful of. Yeah. So, as to the policy or the code of conduct that we would develop, so ano ba yung content niya? So, define yung gender-based sexual harassment, yung coverage, forms, classifications, penalties, and then procedure, specify the procedure as well as the function of uh, the committee. Ayan. So, as I have said, uh, the Department of Justice, they have uh, issued uh, their revised rules on uh, the Committee on Decorum and Investigation, but that revision was still based on the old law and not on the new law. Uh, but for me, it could still be useful as a pattern on how we would uh, create or develop this committee on uh, decorum and investigation. So what, what is the composition and function of the CODI? So, lahat ng stakeholders, almost all stakeholders must be represented. So, there must be one representative each for the stakeholders. And then, ito po, uh, yung CODI ay kinakailangang uh, nililid siya ng babae. And not less than half of its members shall be women. Okay, so very strict yung law as to the composition of uh, the CODI. So every CODI shall be composed of members who should be impartial and not connected or related to the alleged perpetrator within the fourth degree of consanguinity or affinity. And most importantly, have no prior record of involvement as a respondent, defendant, or accused in any case of whatever nature on sexual harassment. So ito po ay kahit uh, allegations lang, um, kahit po hindi naman na found as guilty uh, for the integrity of the committee, uh, yung member kailangan walang case involving sexual harassment. Whether the case was just filed or it was already decided and uh, the, the, the member was or the probable member uh, was found not guilty again um, to, to make 
uh, the, to, to ensure the credibility of the committee, uh, such member should be avoided. Okay, so hindi lang po na naging guilty siya uh, kahit po anong um, kaso or allegation na nag involve ng sexual harassment, uh, hindi na po siya pwedeng maging miyembro ng committee uh, on decorum and investigation. And then we have uh, the CODI shall ensure the protection. So this is the function of the CODI. It shall ensure the protection of a complainant from retaliation without causing her or him any disadvantage, diminution of benefits or displacement, and without compromising his or her security of tenure. So hindi lang naman po ito, uh, the law does not only protect the victim, it also protects uh, the alleged perpetrator in terms of his or her employment. So um, we just have to ensure that there will be no retaliation um, without affecting yung employment nung perpetrator, nung alleged perpetrator. And so all schools, whether public or private, including formal and non-formal systems, shall educate students from the elementary to tertiary. So this is about uh, the creation of a manual or modules for um, education and uh, information dissemination of this uh, law. So as it is mentioned in the, in the law, the, the courses, or the module should be shall be age appropriate, inclusive, and culturally sensitive. Um, and okay, so it must be age appropriate, inclusive, and culturally sensitive. And so that's it for uh, today. Uh, thank you. I hope you have learned something from my talk. So we now move on to the next. Maraming salamat po, attorney, sa inyong uh, makabuluhang uh, panayam. Uh, akin din pong uh, pinararating ang pagpapasalamat. Akin na BP Alan Mabunga, Dr. Zinaida Reyes, uh, uh, Dr. Minda Valencia, Dr. Laya Amor Cortez, at mga kasamahan natin sa iba't ibang campuses para sa inyong presensya sa araw na ito. So ngayon naman ay uh, dumako tayo sa ating open forum na pinangungunahan ng ating Director ng Panadalapi at Administrasyon, Director Ray Malcacho. Sir Ray? Sir Ray, pwede na po tayong mag-open uh, forum para sa ating mga katanungan. Ma'am Grace, may meeting daw sila kay VP Yura, kaya kayo na lang po ang mag- uh, Ah, okay. So, inaanyayahan ko po ang mga participants na magtala uh, ng inyong mga katanungan. At uh, pwede rin na uh, magsabi kung gusto nyo ng live na itanong kay Atorni. Meron din po akong announcement habang nag-iisip po kayo ng katanungan. Uh, Ipopost po dito sa chat box or email ang evaluation ng certificate para mabigyan kayo ng certificate. So meron po ba tayong mga katanungan? Madam, Sir? Ma'am Grace, Engineer. Ah, Sir. yes, Sir. Sir well. Good morning. Uh, magandang umaga, Attorney Frances. Um, magandang umaga po, Sir. Uh, napakaganda ng discussion nyo at uh, tamang-tama dito sa ating uh, uh, virtual classes. Uh, very much applicable. Uh, may, kanina lang po ay umatend ako. <laughs> Nag-attend ako umatend dun sa... <laughs> Uh, meet pa meeting ni President uh, sa Go Philippines. Uh, accidentally, napindot ko isang boto, hindi na ako makabalik. <laughs> um, nag, magkasabay po ito, eh. itong dalawang ito, parehas na 9 o'clock. Mamayang hapon naman, may meeting kami, may Zoom meeting din kami sa, sa CHED naman. Si Attorney, kasi galing din sa CHED. <laughs> Ay, gustong image yung lahat ng uh, heads ng uh, higher education institution. Attorney, Ang katanong ko ko ay ganito. Um, but, kasi in in uh, some uh, literature, 
may nakalagay na by the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word shall be established. Or one witness is not enough to convict uh, someone of a crime. At least two witnesses are necessary to prove that someone is guilty. Then I also heard in one of the discussions uh, before na hindi na raw ito applicable. Ano ba, uh, attorney, yung uh, uh, dapat nating sundin dito? Um, thank you, po for that question, sir. Actually, um, sa law, dun sa Safe Spaces Act, walang requirement as to witnesses. Walang requirement po. Um, as long as uh, you can find probable cause or you can find evidence that that person has committed sexual harassment, um, kahit isang witness lang or kahit um, documents lang ang nakita mo, like probably my videos or kaya my photos, kasi hindi na po siya katulad nung dati na complainant-based yung, yung pag-file ng case. So, moto proprio po, ibig sabihin, kahit yung school mismo, pag may nakita siyang report, kahit wala pong complainant, uh, the school can act on uh, the report. And um, the, the school can gather or collect uh, evidences regardless of uh, kung ilang witnesses po yung makuha nyo. Um, as long as uh, you can substantiate. Hindi naman po kasi uh, the school is not required uh, as um, similar to the courts kasi yung courts uh, they should they should rule in terms of um, uh, the veracity no yung truth talaga ng uh, ng evidences kailangan uh, as much as possible absolute siya kung hindi man absolute malapit sa absolute. So, kung administrative like the schools, hindi naman po yun uh, required. So, substantial lang. So, as long as there is a substantial evidence that would um, prove that the perpetrator is guilty, then he could be found guilty by uh, the education institution. Kasi, attorney, may mga tinatawag din tayo yung mga circumstantial evidence. So, kailangan yung uh, case ay substantial? Substantial, sir. Substantial. Uh, yung circumstantial naman po, sir, uh, it should be corroborated by a testimony. So, pwede po siyang i-accept as long as meron po tayong uh, meron po tayong documents or testimonies that would uh, corroborate the, the circumstantial evidence. Ayan. Thank you very much, attorney. Maraming salamat sa Luwen. Uh, inaanayahan pa po ang iba na magtanong kay attorney bago natin. Can I uh, ask question po? Ayan, sir, sir uh, Tacho, kayo na po. Yes, ma'am. Uh, 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 actually, I'm attending two meetings ngayon. Uh, isa sa BP URA and at the same time sa Zoom. Uh, attorney, thank you so much for a very informative uh, discussion and uh, I really appreciate your thoughts and also thank you so much for providing examples. Uh, my, my question has something to do. Gusto ko lang po sundan yung isa, yung follow-up question. Is it, if it's in terms of online, hindi na kailangan ng mga witnesses, a screenshot will be enough? Yes, Is sir. Because that is considered, sir, as a document already. Yes. So, okay. okay, my second question. Uh, yep. You, you you provided an example where the teacher is the one becoming the yes the, perpetrator you know, the, the perpetrator, yeah, perpetrator sir now what if there are students who are uh, sending uh, at least are uh, providing uh, sending text messages or private messages uh, to their faculty uh, what's the best thing for the faculty to do if this if the text message or the uh, the, act the actions, whether online and by other means possible, is becoming malicious. What's the best thing for the faculty to do? Although it's uh, a very common question, pero... It, eh, it happens, uh, actually, it happens, uh, sir. Yes, ma'am. But yes. from, what, from an attorney point of view, from your point of view, may I know how you respond or what's... Yeah. How, how should we deal with this? Yes, sir. So, based on uh, the Safe Spaces Act, so siguro yun yung kagandahan ng bagong law kasi even students and trainees can be liable. So, hindi lang siya, 
hindi lang siya uh, dun sa in terms of you have a moral ascendancy or authority para maging uh, liable ka for sexual harassment. So, if uh, the faculty receives remarks which he or she feels na malicious na, so he or she can uh, can also report, okay? Can also report such acts, uh, those acts of uh, students, um, and it should be acted upon by by the school. So hindi lang po hindi lang po yung mga faculty or educators ang pwedeng uh, mag uh, mag commit ng uh, sexual harassment. So pwedeng pwede rin po talaga yung mga estudyante. So pero um, Medyo mababa kasi ang ang penalty ng student, so ang penalty for students is based lang sa student manual. Siguro po, i, ano natin yung student manual natin or student handbook na uh, kung ano po yung procedure. So in case it's the student who would be uh, committing sexual harassment, so what would be the procedure? Pero they, they will be held liable, definitely, if they do that, they will be held liable, sir. So you have to report it as well. Kasi baka po um, may mga future cases and uh, hindi nyo po report so it would fall on you as well. Pero hindi naman po ito, hindi naman po ito um, required na i-report nyo. Kasi pwedeng meron po kayong decision on your part not to report it. Pwede naman po yun. It will not be taken against you kasi uh, kayo naman po ang uh, victim, if ever. So, hindi naman po kayo required na mag-report. Pero, again, siguro to, uh, to be cautious na din, if ever uh, in the future, uh, cases of sexual harassment uh, will ensue. So, medyo baka po dun sa naranasan nyo before, pwedeng connected to. So, it would it would uh, fall against you. So, kailangan nyo pong i-weigh yung uh, decision nyo. Pero definitely, again, the student will be held liable if you report it. So as to reporting, hindi naman po siya required na kailangan mong i-report. Pero halimbawa, kung merong, meron pong halimbawa kaso na yung mga estudyante, uh, you will be harassed na, Hi, if you don't do this for me, then I will file a case against you. May mga ganong harassment uh, na ginagawa yung mga students. E, ikaw naman on your part, hindi mo na-report na, ay, uh, ito, may mga malicious uh, remarks na to before, pero hindi mo ni-report. So, hindi mo siya pwedeng mat mabalik sa kanya dun sa bata kasi parang nagkaroon ka ng decision na ah, hindi ko na to report Parang um, silence on your part. So, it would be, it could be detrimental in future uh, cases. <laughs> yeah, it would be, it should, it could be, sir, it could be used against you. Kasi, bakit hindi ka nag-react? Meron na pala. So, hindi mo pwedeng sabihin, ay, nangyari na sa akin yan. Pero hindi ko ni-report. So, uh, the, yes. Well, this, is, this is a bit critical and very uh, sensitive uh, yes. issue. Yes, um, sir. And we deal this according to the what's written in the, the handbook. If I'm yes. a faculty, uh, please uh, uh, forgive my ignorance. Uh, I should directly report this to the guidance or to our students' office or to, to your Cody. Uh, Cody, tama si ma'am. Sa Cody, sir. It should Cody. be with Cody, yung uh, committee on decorum and decorum. investigation. Opo. Uh, okay, I think we have to uh, orient that uh, in our campus. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. Kasi sila po talaga yung... They will work on it and they should work on it uh, speedily. Actually, um, uh, yung sa IRR, kaya nagre yung ibang schools kasi sabi, 10 days after constitution, may, may report na agad. So na namumroblema namumroblema din yung ibang schools na i-implement yon kasi hindi naman agad-agad within 10 days you would be able to resolve 
uh, you will be able to resolve the case. So, tas meron pa pong um, part doon na kapag hindi kaya or kapag uh, in the discretion of the receiving officer, uh, talagang there is a uh, prima facie uh, evidence na meron talagang naganap na uh, sexual harassment. So, pwedeng within 48 hours, kailangan maibigay na sa kodi. Tapos yung kodi kailangan makapag-constitute uh, na kaagad. So, and then after 10 days, after receipt, kailangan may resolution na sila. So, although hindi pa naman siya strictly uh, implemented, kasi nga, there are oppositions on the part of um, schools kung paano daw nila gagawin yung 10 days. Tsaka, tsaka yung resolution, sir, ng 10 days, I think hindi siya feasible. Mm -mm. Yeah. Attorney, may, may question po. Yes, Sige, Ms. Brenda. Uh, thank you, ma'am. Salamat. Ma thank you po. Sorry. Yung, kunwari, ah, ano, uh, how long po, ma'am, yung validity ng pag-report like may nangyari na harassment tapos how long na valid yung magpa-file ka po ng case? Um, based on the law mm -hmm. nasa na nga ito sandali lang po kasi meron mga meron pong prescriptive periods yung mga cases na fina-file. So, I'll, I'll just check lang po. Ayan. Dun sa lo mismo. Mm-hmm. Where uh, so uh, ayan, prescriptive periods. So for offenses committed under section eleven, section eleven A. So, tingnan natin yung Section 11. So, Section 11, I think, is not for schools. Section 11A. Tama ba ito? Ayaw. Uh, section 11 is for uh, public spaces. So, hindi po siya applicable sa atin. Pero yung... Mm -mm. Offenses under Section 12. Okay. In five years. So in Sections 16 and 21, ito po yung applicable sa atin. So it shall prescribe in five years. Five years. So five years, ma'am. So medyo matagal. So wala na sa, probably wala na sa school yung estudyante. So pwede pa rin siyang mag-file ng case. Katulad po kasi ito ng um, mga cases or offenses uh, against uh, chastity. So yung uh, acts of lasciviousness, sexual harassment, uh, rape. Medyo mahaba yung prescriptive period kasi yung mga victims, uh, the law recognized that uh, the victims would have uh, hesitation as to the filing of cases. Yes, ma Thank you, ma'am. Okay po. Uh, attorney? Uh, yes, ma'am. Tanong ba to or sharing ng experience? Uh, kung paano na paano ma-address or ano ba uh, example po ah uh, yung professor nag-send ng uh, ng video a short video na nakalagay daw na uh, nakalagay ay 
ganito dapat ang gagawin sa unfaithful husband. Tapos yung video, yung babae sinus nag nagpa-bounce, nagpa, nagsusuntok siya sa ano, na nakahubad. Na hindi sa punching bag, tapos nakahubad. So yung yung harap ng babae ay ano, ay kita. So uh, and then that second video is Kaya sinasabihan ko, yung quote niya is, kaya sinasabihan ko ang mga estudyante ko na mag-iingat. Yung video is, estudyante na hinahipa ng hangin yung palda, tapos mm-hmm. nakulang underwear. So, yun. Paano, uh, Siyempre, uh, ang offended, uh, hindi comfortable yung pinagsendan na estudyante. Yeah. Uh, sabi lang niya na hindi ako comfortable sa mga ganitong video, sir. Pero deep inside, at uh, nagaano yung damdamin niya parang feeling niya nababastos siya sa mga ganong klaseng video kaya lang may mga precaution na oh wag mag ganito ba dap, ganito dapat dapat ganit dapat uh, sinasabihan kay estudyante ko mga ganun bas parang double meaning <laughs> yes po. ma'am yes ma'am address ka no natin yeah. <laughs> um Ma'am, yan po yung sinasabi ko kanina na kailangan yung mga educators we really have to be cautious on the instruction that we give kasi Katulad halimbawa nung uh, yung joke doon sa case ni nung attorney. Yung joke niya is kasi tinanong siya, tinanong niya yung bata. Tapos hindi narinig nung bata yung question. Tapos sabi nung bata, uh, please come again, please come again. Yun yung sabi nung bata. Tapos sabi naman nung professor is, uh, are you sure? Uh, it would take minutes for me to come again. Double meaning po yung, okay, <laughs> yung remarks. So, uh, ganun din po dun sa example niyo, ma'am. Uh, dun sa una, medyo pwede mo pang i-justify as uh, a form of uh, instruction siya, video instruction, na ah, ito, ganito yung gagawin. Although may nudity, um, siguro as a faculty, or educator, we have to uh, inform the students first. Hindi siya, kasi yun nga ma'am, there are students who would uh, be very sensitive as to these kinds of uh, graphics na uh, may nude lang affected na agad sila. Ano po kasi dito sa, sa batas, ang tinitingnan is yung feeling, yung offensive na uh, feeling offended or unwelcome, unwanted, yung pinapanood o kaya yung sinabi sa kanila. So, very uh, sensitive yung yung law as to uh, the victim, the probable victim. So, kaya yung mga educators, siguro if uh, kailangan-kailangan necessary talaga na ipapalabas mo yung ganun para magkaroon ng effect sa bata, um, then you have to be, uh, you have to inform them that uh, in this kind of video, there will be nudity uh, ex- uh, ex- uh, presented. So if you will not feel, uh, if you don't feel uh, watching it, so you can decline. Or pwede, mong sabi, pwede kang hindi manood. Kaya, kasi meron naman din pong mga bata na okay lang sa kanila yon. Diba po? Pero yun pong pangalawa, yung sa example na merong video na lumilipad yung palda, yeah. ay, ma'am, yun po, walang, walang exemption doon. You cannot justify it. Okay? Uh, kasi po, Kasuhan talagang, yun, you know? yes, uh, medyo demeaning na po siya. Hindi, na, hindi siya for educational purposes. Um, it's, it actually creates uh, a damaging uh, impression dun sa reputation nung batang yung palda ay lumilipad. So, ano na po siya? Uh, punishable na po siya. Pero yung una, pwede pa po siyang i-justify. Kasi for, if it is really necessary for educational or for instruction na talagang kailangan may ilabas ko ito kasi uh, dito ko lang maipapakita as example kung ano ang pwedeng gawin, ganyan. Although, although medyo parang hindi na din siya ano, justified. Pero for me, it could still be 
uh, use if it is educational yun nga uh, just remind the students that there is uh, some nudities um, in this uh, video and kung ayaw mong manood so pwedeng hindi ka manood so merong ganun pong uh, disclaimer before watching the video para lang po um, hindi naman tayo makasuhan as educators kaya Salamat po. Okay po, ma'am. Nandiyan ka pa po. Uh, meron po si, ang uh, tanong po dito si Dr. Zenny. Pwede, uh, pwede niyo pong, uh, gusto niyo pong erase niya yung uh, tanong. Ma'am Zenny? Um, good morning, attorney. Um, good morning po, ma'am. Doon sa, kasi di ba, um, kahit na anonymous, may nagsumbong, di ba? Uh, pag narinig yan ng management, kailangan i-process. Yes, ma'am. So, kung, kung halimbawa, kasi sa CODI, mahirap investigation. Kaagad, ka, kung susundan natin yung RARAX, meron siyang preliminary investigation, fact-finding. Ngayong fact-finding, so maghahanap ka ngayon ng mga datos kung uh, tama yung naririnig mo. So ngayon, ang, ang isang issue ay... Uh, Meron mang mga nagsasalita. Ah, uh, uh, kasi ang ang nasa isip pag pumunta na siya doon sa formal complaint, formal investigation. Ah, uh, lalabas yung complainant eh, parang gano'n, ano. So doon sa ano kasi anonymous, safe silang magsalita, gusto nila confidential, etc. Pero pag tinanong mo talaga na actual na mag-witness na pag dumating na doon sa formal investigation, hindi ko na alam kung kung ano, paano natin i-appreciate. Kasi meron talagang, uh, kunyari, nagsasabi, ma'am, huwag niyo akong sasabihin ako. Ayaw kong ilabas yung pangalan ko. No? Kasi doon sa fact-finding. Pero nagkikwento na siya. So, isa-isa yun, no So, ano yung gagawin pagdating na doon sa formal. Uh, second na ano, yung kinumplain, naghahanap din siya ng paano yun, attorney, yung... So, ikinumplain siya. So, kung naghahanap ngayon siya ng formal letter kung ano yung complaint sa kanya. So, yun, yun yung, yung tinitignan na uh, papaano yun doon sa proseso. Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, doon po, ma'am, sa mga victims, hindi naman po necessary na pangalanan talaga sila. Um, provided, meron po kayong uh, probably a document na siguro pinirmahan or may uh, mga witnesses, kahit hindi po siya yung pumirma, kasi kahit yung mga witnesses lang yung mag, ano, uh, mag-sign uh, na siya yung nagsalita, pero hindi nyo po siya pangangalanan. I mean, katulad po sa mga uh, rape cases, anonymous po, may, alia may alias lang sila, uh, hindi necessary na pangangalanan yung uh, complainant. Uh, pero kailangan po talaga nilang lumabas. Pero not necessarily na papangalanan po, ma'am. So, uh, ngayon, as the formal complaint na hinihingi ni perpetrator, pwede pong ang mismong school, yung coding po mismo, or yung fact-finding, sila yung magkikreate ng formal, uh, formal charge against this perpetrator. So, hindi po kailangan yung formal complaint. Pero hindi ba formal charge ga, manggagaling sa CODI? Yes po. So, pag may formal investigation na po, pag hini... Yung formal charge? Uh -oh. So, pag hiningi po ni pag, perpetrator... Pag formal investigation, na doon ang formal charge. Pero yes, yes, ma'am. Pero yung fact-finding kasi... Uh, 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 fact-finding facts pa lang ang hinahanap mo. Uh, saka na lang, pag bumunta na doon sa ano, pag sinunan natin, rarax kasi facts pa lang yung sa preliminary. Pag formal, nandoon na yung formal charge. Uh, so, ibig sabihin, ma'am, pwede na po yung, ano, kahit ang code, ay, hindi pala code, yung fact-finding committee po ang maggagawa uh, ng letter, ng complaint. So, hindi po necessary na yung uh, complainant, yung maglalagay nung, ano, uh, ng allegations. So, per anonymous complaint, Pwede po yung fact-finding committee po yung gagawa ng letter papunta po doon sa perpetrator. So, in reference pa rin po doon sa anonymous complaint. Okay, yes. Ayan, ma'am. So, so okay. hindi, hindi naman po kailangan na yung complainant mismo yung mag-ano. Uh, 
kahit po yung committee na. Kasi, kasi sa law naman po, uh, inauthorize naman yung agency or yung institution na mag-investigate on its own initiative. So, pag sinabi pong own initiative, so kahit tayo na po mismo yung mag, magbibigay ng letter uh, ng complaint doon sa perpetrator. Kasi kung sa process attorney, halimbawa yung yung ano kasi yung mga nagte-testify, uh, ayaw din nilang lumabas yung pangalan nila kasi hindi pa sila ako nyari, hindi pa sila nag teacher ko nyari, nang nireklamo. Tapos teacher na na ongoing, so wala pa silang grades. So yung, yung mga nagwi-witness, ayaw din nilang lumabas. May ganung may ganung klase ng ano. Uh, pwede rin po, pwede rin po ma'am, uh, hindi po kailangan na uh, ilabas yung mga pangalan nila. Although, sabi po dun sa ano, sabi naman sa, sa law is um, kailangan natin gumawa ng procedure na pag merong nag-complaint, kailangan hindi siya, ma, uh, hindi siya maapektuhan ng retaliation ng perpetrator. So, Siguro, pwede po tayong mag-insert sa uh, sa procedure natin na kapag merong complaint, kailangan tanggalin na po sila doon sa tanggalin po sila doon sa sa class. Ganon. Or gagawa po ng paraan yung school na hindi ma 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 makapagretaliate yung uh, yung perpetrator. But in any way, ma'am, hindi po kailangan isulat yung pangalan nung mga ano, mga nagtestify. Lalong-lalo na po sa ganitong case kasi talagang may uh, may moral ascendancy, may authority yung perpetrator over uh, dun sa victim and other witnesses na pwede nyo pong makuha. Okay, thank you, Attorney. Yes, attorney, attorney, related to that question. Uh, yes, po. Dun. Pero dun sa fact-finding committee, kailangan na uh, uh, the uh, concerned students uh, will appear physically before the committee, di ba? Yes. Yes, sir. Um, yung, committee, yung committee na po mismo yung mag-a-affirm uh, nung kanilang... Um, nung testimonies nila. So, ibig sabihin, kahit hindi po nakalagay mismo yung pangalan or walang document, pero nag-testify naman. So, may record naman po yun, sir. Eh. So, hindi lang, wag lang pangalanan din dun sa pag nag-meeting, uh, nag yung fact-finding, wag lang din pong pangalanan para uh, ma-protect yung uh, identity ng mga Uh, uh, witnesses and the victim po. Salamat. Salamat, Atoni. Meron pa po nga dito katanungan si Ma'am Ayona. I am a female faculty and I do say I love you and I miss you sa mga student ko no matter what gender. Will that be a basis for sexual harassment given na babae ako? Or depende pa din kung paano mararamdaman ng student nakabase pa din how they feel? Yes, ma'am. That's correct. Actually, it's based on how they feel. Kasi kung for them, um, yung mga students po kasi minsan gusto rin nila sasabihan mo ng ganyan, I love you, ganyan. Uh, med some of uh, the students would feel good. Pero meron din namang mga estudyante na parang malicious na yung dating sa kanila. So, yun po ang uh, doon po tayo medyo mag uh, mag caution. Uh, siguro hindi po tayo basta-bastang uh, mag I love you or mag I miss you <laughs> sa mga bata. Um, siguro kung talagang feeling mo na ay ito close ko ito, um, hindi naman siya ma-offend kapag sinabihan ko ng I love you. So okay lang po siguro yun. Pero kasi po yung yun nga po yung ano ng batas is nasa victim victim centered po siya. So sa emotional uh, appreciation nung uh, nung bat nung nung victim. So kung feeling niya offensive yung I love you or I miss you na para sa iyo hindi naman talaga malicious. Um, 
pwede pong magka-problema yung faculty doon. So, uh, thank you po, attorney. Uh, bali po kasi, um, napansin ko po kasi na parang it, it's quite unfair. Parang, pag, kasi babae po ako. So parang yes, it will be okay. Pag, kahit na lalaki yung sabihin mo na sudyante, they will not take it against you. Pero pag teacher, yung faculty ay lalaki. At siya ang nagsabi, kahit walang mali siya, nagkakaroon ng kulay. Uh-uh. Um, po. Yes po. Pero minsan ma'am, kahit po babae, <laughs> medyo maging ano din po tayo, cautious. Kasi po, uh, baka naman, iba po kasi ang mga bata, ang mga bata ngayon, uh, they would appreciate it def- uh, differently. Um, akala nila, may gusto ka na talaga sa kanila. And uh, they would feel offensive. Ayan. So, me- medyo ano na din siya, ma'am. Uh, cultural, cultural ang... Um, cultural uh, background ng bata. Siyempre, mga Pinoy, pag babae ang nagsabi ng I love you, okay lang. Pero pag lalaki, wala man mali siya, meron ng mali siya. <laughs> Kaya, siguro, um, although hindi ko naman sinasabi na yung female faculties lang, ay, male faculties lang yung maging co-issues. Yeah. Uh, Opo. Tayo po lahat siguro, educators, uh, very cautious dun sa mga remarks. Dati po kasi, before the law, we can uh, say anything kasi wala namang ano eh. I mean, sa sexual harassment naman na, na batas, yung old law, uh, hindi naman talaga yung ano ng bata pero hindi yung feeling ng bata yung tinitingnan or ng victim kundi yung yung act mo mismo mm-hmm. yun so nag na, naiba na dun sa bagong batas so this time it's the victim's uh, mental appreciation ng remarks or ng acts so yun yung tinitingnan ayan po thank you po Attorney, meron pa po. Huwag kayong sasawa. Sige lang po. Okay, <laughs> uh, ma'am Ganal, galing, uh, mula sa North Luzon. Uh, due to many differences, not all c- citizens have clear and sufficient knowledge on laws and the corresponding pe- penalties. Hence, many commit diverse criminal act uh, in considerate of the consequences. What would the government do, particular the LJU to minimize uh, such act? Uh, I think, ma'am, uh, the LGU should um, implement their duty as stated in the law. Kasi po, uh, napaka ano nung law as to, napaka stricto ng law as to dissemination ng information. So, hindi lang siya sa schools, kundi yung LGUs then they should be um, implementing yung information dissemination para ma-inform lahat ng constituents. So, tama si ma'am, kasi maraming hindi alam. Hindi alam yung batas and uh, hindi nila alam na may mga violations na pala against them or may mga violations na sila. Um, since hindi nila alam yung batas, so walang walang case na, na napuproduce. So, Ngayon, I think um, the LGUs should be uh, proactive as to information dissemination. Uh, sabi nga sa law, talagang kailangan yung law na yan, um, magkakandak ka pa ng orientation, ng trainings, um, para ma-inform lang yung mga tao about it. Um, and then, meron pang sinasabi dun sa law, na kailangan may ordinance pa yung LGUs. Uh, ordinance uh, formula- uh, in the formulation of guidelines para sa implementation ng bata. So, sa palagay ko po kung ang LGU ay gagawin lang yung kanilang uh, responsibility as stated in the law, um, everybody could be informed about uh, the law. Salamat po, attorney. Uh, 
from question from uh, Sir Dante Avila. Paano po ang composition composition ng kodi for us uh, to avoid bias to both parties? Victim or com uh, complaining? Opo, uh, may, may composition po na sinabi yung batas. So all stakeholders should have one representative. So yung school head, uh, uh, yung, yung administrators, yung students, yung faculty, uh, yung staff, um, nandun po siya sa, sa law. So meron pong composition. So all stakeholders, kasama pa nga yung mga parents. Parents. Parents should also have uh, a representative dun sa Cody. Tapos, uh, it should be headed by a woman and uh, at least half ng composition ng members ay, <coughs> ay babae. So, yun po ang ano ng Cody. Kahit college attorney, kailangan ng parent. Kahit college. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, si po minor din sila eh. Ay, okay. okay. Uh, thank you, message from uh, Ma'am Nanette. And they keep on repeating the act of magnifying even more. Sabi po ni Ma'am Nanette. Thank you daw po, Atorio. Thank you. Uh, meron pong uh, anonymous na tanong po sa akin. Basahin ko po dito. Hindi ko na po sa akin ang pangalan. Uh, paano yung mga green jokes ba na dinideliver during meeting or break sa meeting which make other person uncomfortable ay pwedeng makall out even if hindi address directly sa, sa nag-joke? O hindi, hindi ina-address sa kanya. Parang nag-joke. Parang gano'n yan um, actually, ma'am, ano na rin siya, uh, green jokes are, <coughs> could be actually um, uh, considered as uh, sexual harassment. Kaya, <coughs> kaya nga po yung mga educators na para, sabi ko kanina, maging alive yung discussion, nag uh, <coughs> i-inject ng mga green jokes, ayan, um, we have to be cautious kasi kung doon sa audience natin merong nakaramdam na hindi maganda doon sa joke mo um, and he or she knows this law so you could be called out po for for what you did <clears throat> kaya <laughs> kaya po siguro titingnan natin yung audience kung Ito ba ay ano, pwedeng mag-green joke? Or minsan po, meron po akong experience na yung mga speakers, um, nag, may mga disclaimer po na uh, hope, I hope this will not offend the, the, the sensitivities of my audience. Ganun. Uh, please don't take this... Um, this joke uh, with malice. So, may mga ganong disclaimer. Yan. Para, para po, yung makakaramdam, eh di, expectation, yung expectation niya, mamamanage na. So, sa palagay ko po, pag ganun, hindi na siya makakaramdam na, no? kasi, nag-disclaim ka na, eh, na um, this joke will be, ano, ganyan, may, may affect or may be offensive to some. Ayan. I hope it will not offend you. Okay, or don't take it uh, as offensive. Ganun po. So, opo, every meeting po, Sir Ray, kailangan ng disclaimer. <laughs> Kapag may jokes. <laughs> yes po. <laughs> Ayan. So, ma'am kay, ano po, kay Sir Nolly, does internet harassment or cyberbullying falls under a safe spaces app? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, it would still fall under the Safe Spaces Act at the same time uh, sa Cybercrime uh, Law Act or Act. So, dalawa yung pwede mong pagpilian kung anong batas yung gagamitin. Kung yung Cybercrime Law or yung Safe Spaces Act. Kasi, 
specific na po, may rule specific for uh, gender-based online sexual harassment. So, cyberbullying, it could be... Um, it could be punished as well in space uh, safe spaces app. Ayan. So titingnan niyo na lang po kung alin ang mas ang mas ma uh, mas madali yung procedure or kaya yung mas malaki yung punishment. Ayan. So ganun po kasi pero pwede po siyang punishable dun sa dalawang batas. Hello po ma, may may question lang po ako. Yes, uh, halimbawa po ay ang estudyante ay nag-share sa faculty or halimbawa sa akin ng sexual harassment na na-experience niya at home. Uh, tapos tumanggi naman po siya na, na uh, uh, magreklamo or mag-file ng case doon. Kasi nga po ay halimbawa ay kapamilya ang gumawa nito. Uh, may responsibilidad po ba yung uh, halimbawa ako na na-share niya na Uh, mag uh, or i-advise siya or something hindi ko po kasi alam ang ang uh, gagawin doon sa mga ganung kaso. Um so sa labas na po ito ma'am ano oh, hindi po, sa, sa loob po, ng school. So uh, pwede po siyang i-report sa police uh, sa women's desk ng uh, PNP. Ayan. So pwede niyo po siyang i-advise na Or pwedeng kayo rin po. Pwedeng kayo na po yung uh, mag-report and then sila na po yung um mag-iimbestiga doon sa ano. So reporting ano po, reporting po lang ma'am. Halimbawa po ang bata, ayaw po kasi ng bata. Parang nag halimbawa nag-share lang siya para lang ano, uh, may pananagutan po ba ako na <laughs> doon sa bata na uh, ano nang ganun. Actually, wala naman, ma'am. Wala po kayong... Kasi labas naman po ito ng, ng school. So, uh, ang dapat po talaga dyan is yung guardian mm. o kaya yung parents, sila po ang dapat na magre-report. Ngayon, kung ayaw kasi nung bata, um, hindi rin naman po natin sila... Uh, hindi naman po natin sila under... Uh, hindi under ng jurisdiction natin. Kasi po so, natatakot ang bata na yung masisira din yung, fam- yung family niya tapos may takot siya talaga. <laughs> Parang ganun po yung uh, ano. Yes ma'am. So kailangan po dyan eh, i- ano po muna natin siya, ikakounseling tapos uh, siguro ang support ang pwede na lang po natin gawin is tulungan na lang po siya Uh, siguro kung kaya natin tulungan na uh, mag-report through counseling so okay po yun. ngayon wala naman po kayong ano na mag-report pero kung gusto niyo pong mag-report hin- wala rin po kayong wala rin pong nagsasabi na hindi po kayo pwedeng mag-report ayan thank you po okay po ma'am thank you ma'am Amor uh, from uh, Sir Dandy uh, attorney yung low po bang limit lang sa sexual harassment sa Safe Spaces Act? Pwede po bang, for example, isang faculty official or official ng isang institution eh, nagmura saying something P uh, sa isang unit or isang office na walang respeto sa office unit? Kasama po ba yun na pwede siya i-report? Af- uh, yung Safe Spaces Act po ay um, wala siyang ano hindi necessary na sexual ang undertone so pwede niyo po siyang i-report pwede niyo po siyang i-report so um asan ayan kasi na naapektuhan yung ano niyo di ba po ang inyong office yung apo trend yes so yung reputation although pwede po siyang Uh, ibang lo pwede siyang sa ibang batas uh, papasok pero kung gusto niyo pong gamitin yung safe spaces act pwede pa rin po kasi pwede rin po siyang uh, misconduct on the part of the official okay so pwedeng under rocks punishable po yun kasi demeaning po yung words niya against you 
So, pero kung gusto niyo po yung Safe Spaces Act, pwede din naman po. Ah, uh, thank you. Ah, uh, Ma'am Ayona, may tanong po si Ma'am Ayona sa iyo. Ma'am Ayona. Um, tanong ko lang po, um, what if mayroong student na hindi naman po siya yung directly na nagkaroon ng issue or encounter sa isang faculty. It's actually her classmate. Mm -hmm. Tapos nakikita niya kasi na parang apektado na yung classmate niya kaya niya inopen sa akin. Tapos, kinuwento niya lahat with the screenshot, lahat ng evidence na uh, nagtitake advantage talaga si faculty dun sa classmate niya. Um, do I have the right to, uh, tawag dito, to file or to make a complaint or isumbong yung faculty given na hindi naman yung batang apektado ang uh, nagsumbong sa akin kung hindi yung classmate niya? Yes, ma'am. You have the right po to report and to file a complaint. Kasi uh, sabi ko nga po kanina, yung batas, hindi necessary yung direct complainant ang uh, magpa-file. Kasi pwede pong mismo yung school, siya on its own initiative, ay mag-investigate uh, mag dun sa allegation. So kahit hindi po ma'am yung nag-report ay yung uh, direct na, na victim, So, you can still report it kasi dumating po sa inyo yung information. Kaya lang po kasi, um, actually, I tried to channel it with um, some of the faculty also. Pero ang balik po sa, parang they didn't do anything then for the reason na um, baka pag pinatawag yung bata ay bumaligtad or hindi siya umamin. Kahit so, naman po ma'am. Uh, ma'am, wala Sige pa po. Sige po. Opo. Kahit ma'am, ano, kahit po bumaligtad, hindi po muna natin iisipin yung ganong uh, action ng victim. Um, kasi po, once na dumating po sa inyo yung information, meron po talaga kayong duty na i-report siya. So, mm -hmm. okay. so, once reported, opo, once reported, yung Uh, yung school na, yung administration, sila na ngayon, nasa kanila na yun yung weight ng um, investigation. So, kasi po ma'am, baka it will be taken against you na meron na po kayong nakuhang report, but you did not uh, act on it. Ayun, so, uh, ang pinakamaganda po is i-report nyo na po siya sa school and then Ma-unburden na po kasi kayo doon, ma'am. So, once na na-report nyo na, uh, na mag-shift na ngayon yung burden doon sa uh, school administrators na in charge of the investigation. So, at least, ma'am, mawawala na po sa inyo yung, yung liability kasi in-inform mo na po yung school about it. Kasi po pag ngayon na hindi nyo po nire-report, baka po it will be taken against you. Abigat po pala ng sinabi ko. No? <laughs> Actually, opo. Pero po, tawag dito, attorney, what if yung bata ay graduate na? Kasi during that time, their fourth year, tapos, ang pakiusap sa akin ng studyante is, kaya niya lang po yun nilalabas kasi hindi na rin po niya kaya. Yung, yun nga po yung sabi niya yung burden. Hindi na po niya kaya and She wants to <clears throat> tell it to someone na para maintindihan din. And ang pakiusap niya po sa akin that time is wag siyang isusumbong. Yun po, the usual na, sum, na pakiusap na wag siyang isusumbong, wag lalabas yung pangalan niya. Kasi mm -hmm. during that time, eh, graduating sila. Ngayon mm -hmm. po ay ilang taon na po yata silang graduate. Parang three years. Ilang, ilang parang taon na ba, ma'am? Pa po ba yun? Ilang taon na po parang ba, ma'am? Three years. Three years ago. Three years? Pwede pa. Actually, it would still matter, ma'am, kasi um, yung, yung law, it's not, it's not uh, punishing <laughs> yung, yung mismong, halimbawa, sa, sa taong ito or sa, sa panahong ito, ito lang, itong uh, sexual harassment nangyari, eh, dito lang dapat siya ipanish. Kasi 
um, kailangan madeter din yung commission. Uh, isa sa mga obligations ng uh, ng school is to deter. Kailangan hindi na mangyari ulit. Kasi kung hindi po siya ire-report, yeah. ayun, kung hindi po ire-report, posibleng may mga panibagong uh, biktima pa itong perpetrator. So, uh, kahit po graduate, sa, sa palagay ko po, mas lalong mas uh, <clears throat> mas ma mas mapapatatag po yung case kasi yung mga yung mga bata ay hindi na under nung nung faculty so baka meron na silang um, lakas ng loob na lumabas although hindi rin naman natin po sila mapipilit pagdating sa ano kung hindi po talaga sila lalabas um, pero kailangan yung pung i-report siya para it's it's one of the duties of uh, the school na <clears throat> editor Ma, ma ma avoid na yung commission ng sexual harassment. Sige po. Ayun. Sige po. Sige po. Kailangan niyo pong malakas ang loob niyo, ma'am. Sige po. Sige po. <laughs> hindi naman po siya, hindi naman po siya ano eh, hindi pa naman siya um, guilty. Ang sa inyo yeah. naman po ay nag-report lang po kayo, ma'am. Yes, And together po. with uh Kung ano man po yung evidence na meron kayo. Yes, so, uh, kumbaga, wala po siyang malis na baka po kasi isipin nyo na baka uh, ma ma-filean kayo ng libel mm -hmm. na baka sabihin na you're damaging the reputation of the faculty. Pero actually, ma'am, ano lang siya, more on clerical clerical uh, act lang sa part nyo po. Kasi nandyan na po sa inyo eh. So, nag-report lang po kayo. Wala, wala talaga siyang intent na whatsoever other than reporting. So, hindi naman po kayo dyan. Uh, ayan. Sige po, ma'am. Kung nga rin po kilala yung faculty. Sige po, sige po. Thank you po. Uh, you're welcome po. Thank you, Attorney. Uh, okay, uh, question from Sir Gio. Sir Gio, pwedeng ikaw na ang mag-raise ng question kay Attorney? Okay. Sir Gio? I'm with Sir Pablo Regalari. Okay. Baka nagkakaroon ng technical problem, Sir Cacho. Basahin na lang natin. <laughs> Ito po ba yung kay Sir Regalario? Apo, apo. Ah, okay. Na, uh, about dun sa unang... Yeah, yeah. Uh, sir, actually, you just have to choose one. Dun sa dalawang statutes, uh, yung sa cybercrime po yata ito, tsaka yung safe spaces, or any other laws, uh, sabi ko po kanina, you just have to choose. Pwede pong mamili kahit alin. So, pwede nyong gamitin po either yung mga statutes. Hindi po pwedeng dalawa. Kaya nga mo, ano, masyado po kasi excessive kapag dalawa. Opo. Opo. <laughs> hindi, na, hindi po pwedeng dalawang statutes. Ano masyado yung excessive? Uh, yes. Asa kalo kasi kanina, so you can be prosecuted for each or either of uh, the statutes. But yeah, it should be either lang, sir. So, bar na siya. Hindi na yes. pwedeng, ano, bar, bar na siya sa uh, subsequent, uh, for example, filing of the cases. Yes, yes, sir. Magiging ano na po siya, uh, forum shopping. If uh, you file in one statute and then you will file another in, an, in a different statute. So, kasi same subject lang po siyan. Tapos, uh, same yung mga uh, complainants. So, magkakaroon, na, magkakaroon po ng forum shopping kapag okay. dalawa po yung final. Thank you, attorney. Thank you, Sir Glo. Uh, Ma'am Ayona, I have another uh, last question. Ma'am Ayona. Sorry, attorney. <laughs> Sige um, po, Ma'am. You're talking about Cyberspace Act and all. Uh, gusto ko lang pong itanong kasi may emerging concern po ngayon sa online. Um, hindi ko po alam kasi kung part na siya. I don't know I don't know also if you're aware of online rape. 
uh, um, part na po ba siya or nasa sakop na po ba siya ng batas um, yung mga ganitong kaso? Wala pang online rape, ma'am. Sa ano po natin, sa, kasi ito po yung, hindi uh, ko po alam kung na, narinig na po yung ano na yon Pero uh-uh. it's actually happening na po. So, ibig po sabihin, wala pa, hindi pa po siya sakop ng batas. Hindi pa siya, ma'am. Pero, if, uh, it could be covered by the Safe Spaces Act and the uh, Cybercrime. Pero, hindi siya articulated as online rape. Okay. Hindi pa siya articulated as such. Yung, yung word. Pero yung acts, ma'am, yung acts, it could be prosecuted through the Cybercrime Act and the Safe Spaces Act. Either, either. Okay? So, isa lang dun sa dalawa. Uh, although, mababa kasi yun, ma'am, kasi kung rape talaga siya, online rape, um, medyo mababa yung punishment sa Safe Spaces Act for that. So, I think the Cybercrime Law would be uh, better kasi mas uh, ano yung penalties niya mm-hmm. mas mataas okay po. po thank you po you're welcome po ma'am uh, meron pa po bang katanungan ng mga kasamahan natin ang Grace yung Brenda may question ah, may tanong ah. ako ah, Brenda. si ma'am Brenda Tama po ba yung pagkaintindi ko, uh, attorney? Yung domestic violence ay hindi po kasali sa Safe Spaces Act? Domestic. Hindi siya, ma'am. Hindi po siya included. Uh, so more of education, uh, sa education sector? Yung... Um, sa streets, ma'am. Public uh, spaces like streets, um online may online na kasi siya tapos sa mga more on common carrier sa mga jeep ganyan po kasi wala po tayong ganung ano doon <coughs> ganung batas so ngayon meron na sa mga PUVs ganyan um, so dito siya mag-apply yung safe space sa pero ma'am yung domestic violence naman po ay um, punishable naman siya in other laws so hindi naman kahit hindi kahit wala yung safe spaces app it's already um, uh, punishable kahit sa revised penal code po meron na po yan so, Tsaka, talagang... sige ma'am tapos din po sa um, uh, you, uh, rights of um, women and children 82 eh, 82 na ito ano RA RA Yung violence against women and children. Yan. So, dun po siya. Uh, ma- malakas din po kasi yung ano nung batas na yun. Uh, karamihan nga ginagamit na siya f- ng mga wife. Kasi mahirap sa revised penal code. So, yung anti-violence against women and children, yun na yung ginagamit. Tsaka mas ano na po siya ngayon. Um, informed na yung mga tao about the law. So, yung domestic violence, ma'am, pwede na siyang mag-ano doon. So, uh, talagang akmang-akma to, attorney, sa uh, new normal education talaga na, na experience ngayon, na flexible. Yes, ma'am, sa flexible learning. Flexible learning. Thank you, attorney. You're welcome uh, po. Follow attorney, po lang. may tanong po ako. Ay, ah, yes, sige, okay. Sir Noli. Attorney, ano ba po yung mga student po namin na experience ng harassment sa SUV, ang sakay po nila, tapos sa street, kanino po sila usually pupunta sa mga gano'n? Um, barangay, sir. So, they have to go to the barangay. May mga women's desk po doon. Um, doon po sila magpa-file ng report. Ngayon, kung hindi po action on, kasi minsan natatagalan sa barangay, they can go uh, directly sa uh, PNP. Philippine National Police. Meron po bawat po station laging may women's desk. So sila po yung uh, mag uh, handle ng case nila. Thank you po. Attorney, follow up po lang yung kay Ma'am Ayona na cyber, ano? Rape? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> online, 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 online rape. 
Uh, paano ko halimbawa ni Ray, tapos binidyo, tapos ni in-upload online? So, siyempre, doon pala sa pag-at of Rick, meron ka ng, pwede ka na magkaso. Yes, ma'am. In online pa, pwede pa bang kasuhan din yun para talagang, kasi sabi niyo, either of the, ano lang eh. Ano yung, ang tawag po doon, ma'am, ay aggravating circumstance. Ah, okay. Aggravating circumstance po. So, uh, kasi, kapag, uh, yun nga po, may, nakumit na yung rape, and then pinost mo pa so it would uh, cause damage dun sa reputation ng victim so it's an aggravating circumstance po ma'am ibig sabihin hindi naman po dalawa yung batas na uh, i hindi po dalawa yung batas na i-apply kundi isa, isang batas lang pero yung kanyang penalty ay mas tataas yun po ang ibig sabihin ng aggravating circumstance So, kung halimbawa 4 years lang or 10 years, pwedeng umakyat siya depende dun sa uh, sa aggravating circumstance niya. Attorney, yung po bang uh, ano nang rape, uh, hindi lang ba nasasaklaw to sa ba, lalaki at babae? Pwede rin ba to sa same sex? <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, ma'am. <laughs> Yan po ay bagong uh, revision ng ano, uh, revised, uh, revision ng uh, revised penal code na ang rape na po ngayon ay hindi na lang between man and woman na yung perpetrator ay uh, man at ang victim ay woman. Kasi gati ganun yung traditional. Ngayon po ay pwede na po sa lahat. <laughs> sa lahat. Ibig sabihin po kahit ano pong kasarian. Ayan. Wala na ba akong na-leave dito sa mga chat box natin mga tanong? Mer meron pa po ba? Pwede yung i-air kay attorney ngayon? Oh, wala. Siguro, uh, uh, just just one last question, ma'am. Okay, sige. Uh, uh, with regards sa uh, learning space, especially online, uh, what what do you recommend or suggest if you will be giving advice to students and how they should how should they take per, uh, personally, seriously, or not so seriously the social media, especially that they, most of the time they are online. Any, any recommendations for our students or suggestions or word of advice? Uh, as used in the classroom or for personal use? Sir so, Ray, hindi ko marinig. Hindi marinig. Uh, ulitin ko lang po. Uh, yep, I'm, I'm listening to another meeting. I'm so sorry, ma'am. Uh, just a word of advice or suggestions to our students. Uh, how should they, in, in relation to the safe space, Uh, how should they relate new social media for personal or academic purposes so that they, so that they will not be violating any uh, laws related to uh, any applicable laws na kung meron man sila binabiolate? Um, actually, sir, ang dami na pong laws na yes. even anti-terrorism act, it, uh, uh, it covers social media as well. So, uh, for the students, they really have to be cautious. Kahit nga po sa mga webinars na ganito, uh, our statements would mean a lot and it could be interpreted in several ways. Um, lalo Kung na kanina po, you mentioned uh, specifically mo, Papa Kulti, uh, na nag-commit ng ganong crime, okay lang po bang mag-mention ng pangalan? Kasi po, nasa Supreme Court decision na siya, sir. Ah, kumbaga convicted na. <laughs> okay, for ano na lang po. Actually, Pero suspended while... siya. <laughs> ah, okay. Ayan. Sige, sige. sige. So, okay, take, take to name. Okay. Sige opo. Po. Public, public ano na po siya, knowledge. Public document na. Okay. Opo. <laughs> Ayan. So, para sa mga students, um, they really have to be cautious. Uh, yung posting. Um, kasi, hindi natin alam sa Safe Spaces Act, uh, yung feelings or emotions ng mga um, mahakabasa, it could uh, it could uh, mean something else sa kanila and sa yo wala naman siyang talagang malis pero for them it would be malicious so it would be it could be taken against you and uh, for some other laws na mas strict katulad ng Anti-Terrorism Act, uh, na simpleng batikos mo lang, it could mean differently. So, it could be interpreted differently. So, for the students, um, as long as um, your, your post or your comment will not incite or induce 
any other person to commit uh, violations, then you can post it. So, isipin mo na. Kasi pwedeng hindi ikaw, halimbawa ikaw, uh, nag-post ka lang na uh, ayoko kay ganito. And then, uh, ikaw naman on your part, you're just expressing what you feel. Pero yung nakabasa na na-induce sila dun sa statement mo na ayaw mo. So, parang nagkaroon ng rage on their part and then nagalit, ganyan, and they they committed certain violations because of your post. So, it could be traced back, it could be traced back on you. So, kaya napaka uh, delikado ng, napaka sensitive, yun nga yung word, napaka sensitive ngayon ng social media. So, <clears throat> Although, alam naman natin, Lalo sir... Lalo na kung na-screenshot ako, sinare pa nung person. Yes. So, kahit, kahit inedit mo na yan, tinanggal mo na yung kung ano-ano, at, pero na, na-retain, may retention, may storage. So, wala, wala tayong magagawa. So, kaya kailangan, caution. You have to err on the side of caution lagi. Ayan. Thank you so much, attorney. Sige po, sir. Okay. Salamat, Sir Ray, para sa ahuling katanungan. Maraming salamat, Ma'am Grace. Basahin ko na lang aking closing remarks. Uh, sa panahon ngayon, marami tayong nararanasan na hindi ka dapat dapat nagawain na panlilin lang o pangaubuso o pangliligalig sa mga kapwa-tao uh, sa online o sa public space. Ang hamon ngayon ay kung papaano ang new normal of education ay makatugon sa mga panliligalig na ito. Kaya tayo bumuo ng webinar na ito para makatulong sa paggawa ng mga polisiya na tutugon sa mga hindi karapat-dapat na gawain sa cyberspace o public places para maiwasan ang mga ito kahit sa virtual na pagkatuto. Maliit lang na hakbang ito pero ang ating mga anak na mag-aaral at susunod na henerasyon ay naililigtas at tayo mismo mga guro ay naililigtas sa kapahamakan. At hindi lang guro kasi may mga staff na kasama tayo dito. Maraming salamat kay Attorney Frances de la Cruz Segui sa pagtanggap sa ating imbitasyon para mamigyan tayo ng linaw sa batas na Safe Spaces Act. Sa lahat ng dumalo sa ating webinar, alam natin na marami tayong ginagawa na paghahanda sa ating pagbubukas ng ating klase, pero pinili pa rin natin na dumalo sa ating usaping Safe Spaces Act. Sa ating butihing staff, faculty and staff ng PNU South Luzon, uh, mga dumalo na galing sa ibang campus, our campus officials, na nagbigay ng idea na ganapin ang webinar na ito sa mga dumalo na galing ng ibang campus. Sabi ko, nasabi ko na kanina, yung uh, uh, head ng Gender and Development Office ng Mindanao, si Professor Lalen Kismundo, uh, head ng Gender and Development Office sa PNU North Luzon, si Professor uh, ay Dr. Raquel Hieronimo, ang ating director ng University Gender and Development Office, si Dr. Minda Valencia. Our, uh, nasabi din kanina, si Dr. Uh, Alan Mabunga, our Vice President. Maraming salamat sa inyo. At ang mga student representatives, ang uh, head ng SGI, nandito rin, nakasama natin, at ang uh, bagong halal na president ng Lady Educators Club ay kasama din natin sa webinar na to. Maraming salamat sa pagdalo sa itong sa webinar natin. Sa ating MC Technical Group, maraming salamat sa inyo. Sa ating pagtatapos ng webinar ay sana ay patnubayan tayo ng ating may kapal at bigyan tayo ng lakas para walang magkakasakit sa atin para sa ating pamilya at mag-aaral. Hanggang sa muli, maraming salamat. Okay, maraming salamat, Ma'am Bren. Tayo ay maghanda dahil magkakaroon muna tayo ng pagkuha ng larawan. 
So, i-open niyo po ang inyong mga camera, ang video, uh, para sa ating pagkuha. Wear your be uh, best smile. And then, sa pagtatapos ay, ay nito, susundan po ito ng himno ng PNU Him. Okay na ba, Jos? Okay na ba? O, dito na rin i-announce kung sino ang winner. Excited <laughs> ka. <laughs> about picture taking po tapos na po ba uh, hello Josh Josh yan ka yan gets do natin naka ano na oh ayan ang dami pa lang mga naka Pilipinyana mga naglabasan may hirapan ng mga judge nito Hello po. Good morning po. Ready na? Ready po ba si Dean? Apo, ready po. Si Dean, si Director, si EDP? Ah, Na-attend po sila ng meeting sa kabila. Ah, sayang. Ready po. Ready, one, two, three. Next po, isa pa po. Ready, one, two, three. Okay. Last one po. Ready? One, two, three. Ayan. So, so, muli, maraming salamat sa paglahok ng bawa, uh, sa programang ito. Uh, mabuhay po tayong lahat.